Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Under Review, the most debatable decisions in the major arena soccer league. I'm your host, Phil Levanko, and look who's back over there, Ryan Sigich, head of officiating for major arena soccer league. Ryan, you almost got Wally Pip last week from Rich Grady, but you're back. We let you come back. <laughs> I am back. I don't understand what the Drew Bledsoe comment was. I mean, come on, Phil, why you got to do me like that? Because... Wally Pip is a very old reference. And Ryan, back in the chair and straight into the hot seat, we head to Milwaukee between the matchup between the Florida Tropics and Milwaukee Wave. We're going to get to the buzzer beater in a second, or almost buzzer beater in a second. But first, Ryan, you wanted to take the play back a little bit. This sure looked like a foul on Drew Ruggles from Ian Bennett. Well, Phil, there was so much excitement in this game overall. But, yeah, here we have an exciting play where it's 6-5 Milwaukee. The clock is under 10 seconds. And Ian Bennett, he comes in late on Drew Ruggles. You know, the referee there, Ron Corey, he raises the blue card, signaling that a delayed blue card penalty is upcoming. The ball's then played into the penalty area at about, I'd say, five seconds on the clock. And it comes off Willie B at four seconds, let's say. But that's not possession at this point. So the whistle doesn't blow yet. Then we can see their Huffman games possession and clears the ball out. And although we can't hear a whistle, I think we can assume the whistle was blown then when the possession happened somewhere between two and about 2.8 seconds. So number one, we have a timing issue as the game clock stops at 1.1. So Ron Corey, he confers with the off-field officials and they reset the game clock to two seconds. And possession is important on this play because as we define it, it's a player having clear control of the ball for at least one second. So the free kick is then taken from midfield, and we have a goal called on the field. So the next determination is did the entire ball wholly cross the goal line before the buzzer begins to sound. So the call on the field is the goal, and then Grady and Corey, they go to VR. And I think the video is pretty clear there. It shows zeros on the clock before we can see the ball is fully and entirely cross the goal line. It was a great job by everyone on the field in Milwaukee to get that buzzer beater call right. Let's go back in time now to the fourth quarter because the Tropics think they've got that sixth goal already. Ricardo Diegas off the bench, slides it past William B., but the Wave think Diegas left the bench too early. Ryan, what do you see? Well, Phil, the number one question on any too many men violation when dealing with the line change is did the incoming player gain an advantage? And if you freeze the video here, I think you can see that Diegas is well onto the field before his teammate is off the field. And therefore, you know, this is this is a too many men violation because because uh, Diegas has the ball in the attacking third, and by him coming out early, he gained an advantage on this play. So, Ryan, we know that there's subjectivity in these calls because there's a tiny bit of grace period for players coming off and coming on. What does a referee look for when judging if a team has an advantage? Well, Phil, the rule states that neither the player entering the field nor the departing player may participate in play or gain an advantage during when they're both simultaneously on the field. So even if they're within that touch line, you know, they still cannot gain an advantage. St. Louis ambush, Kansas City comments. We're halfway through the fourth quarter in a one-goal affair. And Ryan, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not entirely sure what Nascimento is doing here. To me, that looks like a stone-cold blue card. But is it a shootout? Ryan, I'm not so sure. Well, Paulo comes out of his penalty area. He makes contact with the ball. I'm sorry, he makes no contact with the ball, and he trips Nacho. So the referees do well in recognizing that and giving a blue card two-minute power play penalty. And with the new goalkeeper rule, as we all know, Paulo has to go to the box. So to your point, Phil, the next decision for the referees to make is, is this a shootout? And as we've discussed before, one of two criteria must be present. Either number one, the last man foul where no defending players between the attacking player and the goal. Or number two, a foul from behind with the attacking player have control of the ball. Well, this one's not a foul from behind. But if we look at this in slow motion, and Phil, if you stop the play at the exact moment where Paulo makes contact with Nacho, Paulo is in fact the last defender. He's the last man. So this should be a shootout. And it's actually not that easy of a, of a determination to make because this play happens very fast. And as a referee, we have to be able to make what we call a term a, quote, take a snapshot, which is in our mind, we have to take a, a picture of that exact location of the player when that contact happens. So 
you know, looking at this one in game speed and looking at it just one time, it does appear that all the defenders are level, but they in fact are not. Ryan, we've got another shootout play here, and why don't you help me understand why this one was also deemed a shootout? We've got 17 seconds left in the third quarter. Soccer's up on the Harrisburg Heat, and Juan Manuel Rojo is called for the foul. Litter on the field, it goes to video review, and it's deemed a shootout. Ryan, what do you see? Well, it's an obvious foul. I don't think anybody would argue that. Ortiz has possession of the ball, and he's moving in at speed. Uh, and there's just a, a bit of a nudge there with uh, Juan's left arm. And just that little bit of contact, you know, takes Ortiz down. It's the correct call is made. But then on VR, um, this foul, looking at it, it denies an obvious goal scoring opportunity uh, because it is from behind. And Ortiz has an unobstructed um, route there to go inside the, of uh, the yellow line. We're going to continue heading east this time to the CQ Arena for the Baltimore Blast and Utica City FC. 7-1 blast in the fourth quarter. And Ryan, this one looks a little tough here on the officials. Let me explain why. To my eyes, Ryan, it looks like that there's a clear foul here on William Vanzella, or a clear blue card, I should say, because it looks to me that he makes the save from outside the penalty area. This is a really interesting play, Phil, because we have two blue card offenses against the same team in the same sequence of play, and we don't see this very often. So Josh Hughes is actually first given a blue card two-minute power play penalty for the holding, and it's called as as a delayed time penalty there by Austin Saney. I think that's that's the right thing to do, and play's allowed to continue. As Utica number 19 he, there, he retains possession of the ball. Well, then we have a shot on goal, but William is outside of his penalty area, and he clearly handles the ball with his right arm. So this is a deliberate handball by the goalkeeper outside the penalty area, and by our rule, you know, anytime that happens, uh, where that stops an attacking player, stops a shot on goal, that's an automatic blue card and an automatic shootout. And when we have another foul that's committed during a, a delayed time penalty, the play's actually restarted with the foul that stopped the play, which in this case was the handball by William. So we should have had here uh, a shootout for Utica, and the play should have resulted in a, a 5v3 in favor of Utica, two power plays against Baltimore at the same time. This is such a hard thing for referees to see because you're concentrating on the one play, giving advantage, but then all of a sudden another play happens. Ryan, it is chaos to be a referee. Well, Phil, everyone thinks they're a referee, as you know. That's why we created this whole show, Ryan. Okay, one more play. We're going to go back to the Comets ambush game. And, Ryan, I have a bone to pick with you because you told me these double blue card things don't happen very often. And we've got another double blue card happening. Well, again, Phil, I think this is really a lot of nothing. It's just some pushing and shoving around by... Um, Kevin and by John here. It's really nothing, you know, uh, the referees probably should get in there a little bit quicker and just give them both warnings, but it escalates a little bit. So this is what we've referred to unsportsmanlike conduct um, during a dead ball situation. So that's why we saw blue cards to both and a restart of play of 4v4. Those Midwest sensibilities, totally overrated. And that's it for another episode of Under Review. Ryan, welcome back so much. If you have any comments, drop them in the comments section below. We'll see you guys again next week.